So it's uh, f of x equals cotangent of x over sine of x. So f of x equals cotangent of x over sine of x. So cot x, that's not cot x. I don't know why I'm writing so big. Over sine x, over sine x. So I'm thinking, taking Aaron, Aaron's approach, the Aaron way, uh, of rewriting this maybe, might be a good idea. Um, I, I don't know if it's actually going to help though. Because uh, which one is cotangent? Cotangent is what over what? Yeah, so if we rewrite it, isn't it just going to be cosine over sine squared? Is that really going to help us at all? So, uh, 1 minus cosine squared, that just makes it worse. Hmm? The one that simplified 1 over sine x, and that would just be cosine x? Well, if you had, let me do it over here. If you have cotangent of x over sine x, if you write it as cosine x over sine x, let's just try it on the side, over sine x, that's the same thing as cosine x over sine x times 1 over sine x. So it becomes this. But when you find the derivative, doesn't the cosine change to a negative sine? Yeah, but we have to use the quotient rule. Oh. So this is worse. <laughs> so. If you pull the sine x out and go cot uh, cotangent x times 1 over sine, that would be... Cotangent times cosecant. cosecant. And you can use like a product rule? Yeah. You want to do that? Okay, let's try that. I was just going to do a quotient, but okay. All right, let's do that. So let's do it the Aaron. Let's try that. That might, that might be better. Okay, that's really clever. So Aaron's way is very clever. I, I did, this is like crazy. So he's thinking we can do this, just really avoiding the quotient rule at all costs. Like, <laughs> and then so 1 over sine is uh, cosecant. Yeah, so this is cotangent cosecant. So now we can take the derivative of this, right, using the product rule. You could have just used the quotient rule as well, right? I was just going to use the quotient rule until Aaron suggested that it's a little bit faster. But you could also just use the quotient rule. All right, so now we'll use the product rule, right? So let's do it. So it's the derivative of the first times the second. So what, what's the derivative of cotangent x? Do you all remember? Negative cosecant squared x. Very good. Oh, this is going to give us a really pretty solution. So it's the derivative of the first times the second, so which is cosecant x. <coughs> Look at that, we're going to get a cosecant cube, it's beautiful. Plus um, the first times the derivative of cosecant, which was... Cosecant was tangent? Yeah, cosecant cotangent, yeah. It's a good problem. I'm kind of glad we did it this way because it's forcing us to take these uncomfortable derivatives, which don't really come up that much, right? So. So it's good practice. We, these aren't that popular. Let's go over that again carefully. So we could have used the quotient rule, but Aaron had an idea of writing it this way and using the product rule. So I figured, why not? Let's try it. Let's be different. This is a little bit easier. It's a product rule, right? So the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. I guess now we can just combine these cosecants, right? So this will be negative cosecant um, cubed x. And this one is going to be minus cotangent squared and then cosecant. You can probably rewrite this, like factor stuff out and, and do some identity type stuff, but I don't really want to. I think we should just stop there. So cotangent and cotangent is cotangent squared, right? That's how we got that. So nice problem. Pretty, pretty tough. Pretty